All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, fellow pandemonium travelers, this is Seattle Pandemonium Shutdown Day 161 by my count. And it's Friday. We made it through another week. I mean, most of the city's still standing. Um, we're still in lockdown, at least allegedly. Although, if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, there is clearly much more traffic. Commute times are still kind of okay, but they are, uh, they are getting longer. Um, I abandoned I-5 like several months ago just because I didn't want to deal with it. So it's going down because, man, things are getting, things are getting spicy, guys. Um, they were going around to basically random houses uh, or apartment buildings up on, I believe it was Capitol Hill. And in mobs, a, a mob anyway, uh, yelling at the residents in their houses, in their apartments, uh, telling them to get out of what was a black neighborhood, that they stole a black neighborhood away from black people. And you know, they you, they work for Amazon and they're like taunting them and then people like turn out their lights so that they can't see them, can't, you know, can't see inside and see them. Uh, this is not a very good uh, precedent really. Um, people taking out their, I mean, it's, this started because people were demanding police reform. Now they're demanding an ungentrification or that people, like the demand is that they move out of a place that they live, that they own or rent. They have an agreement with the land owner, the property owner to reside there. Now, I can be sympathetic to the idea of like gentrification causing you to even be priced out of the neighborhood that you live in, right? This is, a, this is a negative market outcome that directly affects actual people's lives, right? So on the one hand, the neighborhood becomes nicer because more people have more money invested in it. So the property taxes generate more revenue. You get an increase in you know commerce and things. And the net effect is people have they they sort of see more value and take more care in ooh, in what they own am i gonna go this way no i better not i better just i better just go to the or just go all the way to denny all right we're gonna be going that way in the future though <laughs> i assure you um we'll go back to the old ways the way we used to commute in the before time um I can, and I can have some sympathy, again, for people who kind of, like, fall victim to the gentrification effect and, like, again, like, get priced out of their own neighborhood or watch their neighborhood change into something completely different than it was. However, you have no right to simply tell people they're not allowed to live in a certain neighborhood because of their race. <laughs> we kind of went over all this. Or because they happen to have money. Like, you, if you had more money, you would live in a nicer place, you No. Know? Yeah, there's this this kind of backwards, it's kind of odd, like, I, I, this is kind of the socialism thing, is like, you have a nice house, I should have a nice house too. And if I can't have a nice house, then you shouldn't have one. It's, it's, it's rather childish, and it ignores all of the adversity people may have overcome in order to achieve owning nice things. It's one of the irritating things about this kind of collectivist socialist mentality that that this is all basically a zero-sum game, I think is the, 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 the framing. It's like we all share the same amount of stuff rather than making more stuff, right? Um, provide and create value and then people will give you their resources to have access to you and what you can do. Something like that, right? This is the bargain anyway. 
that we're sort of told is what our our system is supposed to be. Now, I was actually discussing this with some people yesterday in a, in a chat, and uh, the, the resentment of our system as it kind of currently is, it breeds this resentment because we can clearly see a fairly disparate distribution of wealth, fairly, I mean, it's fairly, it's, it's, fair, it's fairly obvious uh, mi uh, distribution of wealth that is very, I mean, <laughs> you're, you can be like Bezos rich, or you can be like Rogan rich, or you can be like the rest of us, or you can be really poor. And it seems as though you have these very, very wealthy people, and all of these not wealthy people, and the problem with the framing I just gave, that it's like you create value and provide value and then you are valuable and then people will give you things that are valuable in order to have access to you and your skills or your knowledge, your abilities, right? Um, the, it doesn't feel that way. Um, I, I understand this. I've been underemployed for like a decade. Uh, the system seems set up for uh, nepotism, uh, basically kind of like a, a variety of gatekeeping. Um, was that necessary to peel out? I don't think it was. Um, various forms of gatekeeping, and this includes things like, you know, uh, certain degrees or certain degrees from certain schools, for example. Um, general elitism. And then all kinds of other factors, right? Allegedly, uh, you know, I don't know, black people don't get hired as often if they have a black sounding name, black sounding quote unquote name on their resume. That's a form of like cultural gatekeeping, right? Um, various types of language and stuff. If you don't use the right verbiage, then people know that you aren't formally trained and therefore you can't possibly do a job, that kind of thing. Um, skilled labor jobs getting outsourced, for example, um, or what I called unskilled tech labor, what I used to do, um, getting outsourced to other countries so that companies can make more money. Never mind that, you know, you have to have like people living in a, you have to have a customer base that has income and has money to buy things from your company. It's just, you know, you get it. The system does seem unfair, right? But, that does not give you rioters and looters the right to destroy other people's businesses. It do, it's certain, it simply does not. I can totally see and feel the inequality in the world. I have lived in, on the edge of poverty for a long time now, right? Which is why this whole pandemic thing hasn't crushed me personally. It's crushing everyone else who wasn't prepared because they haven't been living in the same kind of conditions I have. Now, the pandemic has taken everything from everyone, but you took the last of what people had. They had the dream that they were going to go back and reopen their business and get back to life as usual, and you took that from them. And it's not because you were making a protest about uh, police reform. It's because you wanted to go steal shit. I'm trying to turn it into a some kind of form of activism is asinine garbage. And the more, again, I've covered this before, the more you people promote this stuff like Chicago this weekend, they're gonna riot, they're gonna riot again. And then they're gonna loot again. I don't know if there's anything left to loot, um, but they're going to, and they're going to continue justifying taking other people's things as a form of activism. And at a certain point, certain bad things will happen to you, and I will not feel sad in, in the slightest. I think it's called fuck around and find out, and I think that people are probably at, the, on their, at their last straw for a lot of this nonsense. And it is exhausting to normal people, and yet in the suburbs, everything's quiet. In the suburbs, everything's fine. So the message is 
don't go downtown. That's kind of the message. In Seattle, of course, we kind of already knew that. <laughs> but, uh... That was that way before the pandemic. <sighs> but yeah. It's not okay to just take other people's stuff. And I can already hear the excuse making. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Yeah, but nothing. Victimizing other people and calling it progress because you have a historical uh, a historical grievance is not progress. It, it, it's not. It's excuse making for uh, for bad behavior. Not just illegal, unethical, immoral behavior. And I'll kind of never forgive these people for this. You know who you are. You know who you are. You went and stole TVs and all this other stuff. You know who you are. I'll never forgive you. After all the stuff we've been through, your sense of entitlement is gross. Yes, I'm scolding you. Okay, are you gonna change lanes or are you... Okay. Oh, okay, never mind. Dang it. Yeah. Traffic's getting worse, guys. It's getting worse. So what else is going on? Remember when that crazy guy lived in the Trump van and sent fake pipe bombs to CNN? That's just like a thing. It, like, it was a news cycle for a few days. Like, kind of, it like, came and went. Um, that guy got got charged and he's going to spend time in prison. But they, they were fake pipe bombs, right? They, lo they looked like pipe bombs, but they weren't actually explosives. Something like that. That was weird. And... Then remember when that guy tried to crash a train into the hospital ship? You remember this? Like, this was early on in the pandemic when Trump sent the uh, hospital ship, the, the was it, uh, Navy hospital ship, to, was it, San, was it LA? And then somehow, I don't know how this is possible, a guy had a train on some tracks by the seaport, and he tried to crash the train into the ship? Like, these things just sort of pop up and then, like, we're, we're, like, sort of memed about for a day or so. And then something happened? Like, what happened after that? Remember, like, was it last week when, like, a guy, a naked man got chased. Or, no, a naked man chased a, a, a warthog. Not a warthog. A wild boar through a park after it stole his laptop. I don't know why I bring that up, it's just to say, there's all this wacky stuff going down, guys, and there, I know I've been saying it, we, that we're not going back to normal, right? But we can get back to something like normal, and it starts when people stop destroying other people's property and attacking the police, okay? It's, it, that's where we start from. You've been heard, okay? You've been seen. I think in the wake of George Floyd's, you know, killing, it's like the, the sympathy was through the roof. But the longer this nonsense goes on, you lose support. Because people go, I don't want this anymore. They start, they, like me, they start to get fed up with you. Instead of thinking about police reform and doing something like that and doing things that help, they start to just not like you, and you, lo you lose the message. So I think it's time for you guys to take a different approach and stop destroying other people's things. That's it, that's the, that's the message. <laughs> All right, that's enough from me for one day. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.